I thank you for the amazing blessings, amazing breakthroughs, amazing open doors, amazing change of levels, amazing turnaround, amazing lifting, amazing healing, amazing deliverance. Lord, I give you praise, O oh God, for going ahead of us this month of April, opening doors that cannot be shut. Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I praise you. Excellent God, I worship you. Mighty God, blessed be your holy name for the diverse outpour of blessing that is coming to pass for us this month. We say thank you for souls that will be saved and be established in Living Faith Church, Lafia. We give you praise for multitude that will be flowing again to this sanctuary. We return all glory to you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This month, the resurrected Christ will appear to you. Amen. Every area of your life that needs intervention, this month you will not escape divine intervention. Amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. Something happened, was it on Saturday? After the Saturday ministration and prayer, a word just came and I didn't waste time. I said, whoever is sitting on your blessing, on your prayer from being answered, the hand of God uproots the person. Now that young boy in the dream saw someone holding the answer to his prayer. So he was telling the woman, he was telling the thing, release this thing now, release this thing now. The person did not want to hear to it. The boy just gave the woman a slap. The face just changed to someone in their village. By daybreak, the woman had paralysis. So they were not calling him, come on, something do happen, no, something do happen. That's so, so, so and so person, look at what happened to her. And immediately he said, ah, the person I slapped in the dream. Whoever is sitting on your prayer, whoever is sitting on your answer from being delivered, Mark this word. Angels will give the person a divine slap. If you are saying amen, say better amen. I say it again. Angels will give the person a divine slap. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated. In this month, wisdom from above makes high flyers. In all our midweek teaching series, our focus is serving God pays the most. Everyone that wants to be a high flyer must locate a high flyer. Someone that is crawling cannot teach you how to run. Someone that is a failure in business cannot teach you about business success. I can't understand how someone whose life is battered and shattered is the one now giving you advice how to live life. Paul said, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. If you desire to be a high flyer, you must have seen someone who is a high flyer. I might say something to somebody. I was in a trance this morning before I joined the in the devotion. I just heard this word. Can someone who is living a scattered life be the one now giving you counsel how you will live an organized life? That's a word of wisdom. Someone whose life is not straight, whose life 
has been messed up by the devil is the one now giving you counsel how you'll be doing things. It's a lie. It's a big lie. Because scripture says, by their fruits, you shall do what? Then it does imply that you will be a cardinal fool to be giving birth to. If someone that does not have a proof of any result is the one now giving you counsel on how to get results. Are you understanding where I'm going now? If someone says, I want to teach you how to fly, the first thing you should ask, is he flying? Is he a high flyer? Okay, you drive a car. Can someone riding bicycle say, I want to teach you how to drive a jeep? What will happen to this man? Eh? <laughs> God has a way of channeling his wisdom to us. One way is by direct, direct teaching of the Holy Ghost, by divine inspiration. I will guide thee with my eyes and I will instruct thee. Direct teaching of the Holy Ghost. The second way is by men and women who must have walked in wisdom with proofs to show. Whom you can point to, this is the result that they have gotten. And when you look at it, you say, ah, this result is really real. And whether you like it or not, we have men who have results to show. Who have results to show. Anything you want to become now, somebody has already gotten results in that area. Am I saying the truth? Anything you want to become now, someone has already gotten results in that area. And if the result looks like what you desire in your life, by learning the person's secret, it becomes cheap and easy for you to duplicate the person's result. I remember reading a little of um, Pastor Sam Ademi's book on the success lead. He said he desired the kind of result of Bishop David Oedeko. But since seeing Bishop David Oedeko was proving difficult, the wife said, let's not um, waste too much time. If we can gather all his books and sit down quietly, learn them one by one, we can pick his secrets from the book. And that was how he started. Little by little, they began to draw. As they were reading, they were marking out some things. They began to draw and they began to apply. Hear me? You don't succeed with mouth. You succeed by practice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't become a success by being a good talker. But by being a good worker. So they began to draw the principles from the book and little by little they began to apply the same and little by little the results began to manifest. The results began to manifest. Hear this, you can duplicate anybody's results. You can duplicate anybody's success. If only you, can, you are willing to tread the path, do the things that the person did. Serving God pays. And if someone tells you serving God pays, there is something he knows which you don't know. Am I saying the truth? And it is wisdom to look at how they did it so that you can arrive at the same result. Not everybody that came to church came to serve God. Not everybody that came to church came to serve God. And not everybody that starts the church with you will get the same result with you. 
The point of distinction between you and the next person is the wisdom applied. If you come the same time as another person, hear me? Find out what the person is doing if it is the same thing that you are doing. Not everybody that comes to church is in touch with God. Scripture said when the children of God gathered, Satan also appeared. In Job chapter 1, reading from verse 3 down, Satan also appeared. So if we are 600 here now, not everybody is in church. Some people's heart is in Book and City. Some people's heart is in Makodi Road. Some people's heart is in their shop. But hear me, until you are in touch with God, you will not know the right way to go until you are in touch with God. Until you are in touch with God. Scripture said the labor of the foolish man Weary at every one of them, for he knoweth not how to go into the city. That word, go into the city, means enter into his blessing. Enter into his glory. Enter into his success. The labor of the foolish man. Please, I beg you, may you not be engaged in foolish labor. Amen. Foolish labor is equivalent to massive punishment. Massive torture. It will look as if God is wicked. He's blessing some people. He's not blessing some people. But the scripture said, This same Lord is good unto all. And richly bless all that calls upon his name. This same Lord is good unto all. There is no partiality with God. There is no partiality with God. So there is need for us to subscribe to the wisdom of God that makes serving God pays. There is wisdom. There is a wisdom that we need to connect. When we connect to this wisdom, serving God becomes a delight. The psalmist said, I was glad when they say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad. The profit of the earth is for all. The profit of the earth is for all. And in all labor, there is profit. It does imply he who has a brighter wisdom will make more profit. If you have a lesser wisdom, you will make lesser profit. So your wisdom is what determines your profiting in this kingdom. Your wisdom, not your muscle. I've had Bishop Abue said, activity is not equal productivity. It is your wisdom that determines your profiting, not your labor. If you are engaged in wise labor, I want to let you know, every hour you put in, something must come out. Every hour you put in, something must answer. Why? You are engaging in wise labor. Engaging in wise labor. For our service to be profitable, we must engage first of all what we call spiritual stewardship. Spiritual stewardship is the foundation for profitable labor in the kingdom. Spiritual. Many want to serve, but they don't want to be spiritual. Many want to be committed, but they don't want to be spiritual. You hear me? It is my spirituality that determines my profiting. Not just my availability. Everybody is available. Everybody is available. But I'd like us to read Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, studio. 
from verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Which is your what? Meaning there is unreasonable service. There is reasonable service. There is unreasonable service. Unreasonable service is service that does not have sense. Is doing things without reasoning. Do you know you can be serving without reasoning? You are present. You are doing things, but you are not reasoning. Your mind is absent. Unreasonable service. He doesn't think before he acts. There are people that talk before they think. There are others that think before they talk. Unreasonable service, he has finished doing before he will now begin to reason. So God checks what we do to determine when we are qualified for a reward. So spiritual still worship is the foundation for any profitable service. Now, what is the main thing that triggers spiritual stewardship? Number one, scripture made us to understand to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be spiritually minded. Now, what does it mean to be spiritually minded? Consciousness of divine presence. Spiritually minded. You are mindful of where you are. Do you know, many come to church, they are not mindful of where they are. They are not mindful of where they are. Even Jacob said, God is in this place. And I knew it not. And I knew it not. Thank God we are in the New Testament where God does not kill anyhow again. You know, in the Old Testament, you don't enter the Holy of Holies anyhow. If you mess up, you can be slaughtered. God can just kill you and they will just use rope and tie your leg and draw you, draw you, draw you to the gate and pull you out. You remember? But we need to be conscious of where we are by time. If you are not conscious of his presence, you are likely to misbehave. You are likely to do things anyhow. That's why, without spiritual consciousness, a dickness can see another dickness. You know, no, a senior for this church. Huh? Where? I'm just waiting for one day. <laughs> I'm just waiting for what? Lack of consciousness of divine presence. We are not here to measure age. We are not here to measure when you started the church. Maybe you were the first member when Living Faith Church Lafayette started. If you lack consciousness of divine presence, you are likely to misbehave. People that lack consciousness of divine presence, they cheaply walk in pride. But scripture says, pride goeth before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. That's why you must be conscious. The consciousness of divine presence is what makes for your composure. I am in the house of God. I am in the presence of God. I am in the house of God. And that is why you are conscious. Now, the same way a servant will behave well before his master, that is what God expects of us, to behave well before his house. So when it comes to our service, be spiritual. If you are not spiritual 
in your service, the truth is that you become vulnerable to the manipulations of the devil. You opened up for the devil. Now, I want you to hear this. Judas had a place prepared, but he was not conscious. He lacked consciousness of divine presence. And because of that, he misbehaved before the time. He misbehaved. He was open to the devil. So he was used of the devil. And as he was used, he was also destroyed of the devil. When you are consciousness of divine presence, the truth is you become orderly in your walk with God. Orderly. You become orderly. You become orderly. When they say go here, you go there. Do you know that you can tell Anosha you are, you are going to say the front? Is he every time you'll be sending me to the front? Is he every time you'll be sending me to the front? I remember when I used to be in the choir. One sister, she didn't know I was around, said, what is even wrong with this uh, our music director said? Every day, back up, back up, back up, back up. Which day I go take praise worship? <laughs> so, immediately I heard that word, I just came out. I said, you will never take it. I just came and gave the announcement. I said, you will never take it. Every day, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Hear me? I heard Bishop Abiyo said, I'd rather be number two in God's plan than to be number one in my own plan. Every day, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Be like saying, hate my face. They don't do this job with hating your face. I'd rather be number two in God's plan than to be number one in my own plan. You can be number one and mess up. You can be number one and be wiped out of the devil. But when you are in your right place at the right time, you enjoy divine backing, you enjoy divine presence, things begin to work for you the way it ought to work. Consciousness of divine presence is what makes for spiritual stewardship. Spiritual stewardship. Everybody wants to serve, but you need to serve reasonably. But for you to serve reasonably, you must be conscious of where you are per time. God is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. There are some things that are not said with the mouth, but God weighs the heart. God weighs the heart. He weighs the heart. So wisdom requires that we know where we are per time and what is expected of us to do. Just like Papa defined, wisdom is knowing what to say and saying it. No, wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Wisdom is knowing where to go and going there. Knowing where to go and going there. Now, if you can understand the move of the Spirit as far as this commission is concerned, soul winning is one of the major priority of the plan and purpose of God for this commission. So, if the wisdom of God is saying everybody should be on the go now, I say, no, those are for people that are looking for breakthrough. Those are for people that, are, they, that want God to give them husband. So when it's for people that are looking for the fruits of the womb, it's not for people like us. Should I tell you something? No matter what you claim to have now, God put it in your hand. The same God that put it in your hand can remove it from your hand. No wonder our Robert mother told him, Ora, as God keep lifting you, keep seeing yourself small in your own eyes. When you begin to feel that you are bigger than the instruction that comes from the altar, from this small boy or from Papa, I want to let you know you are gradually on your way to demotion. Little by little, you are going down. Who gave you status that you feel too big now when an instruction comes? Oh, 
It's not for people like us. People like who? Who gave you status? Who gave you that position that you are occupying? Hear me? No man received anything except it be given to him. From where? The same hand that put it for, on you can also collect it back. Can also collect it back. That is why it is better for God to add to you than to reduce you. If God reduces his blessing upon you, you have entered the list of shame. That's why wisdom demands whatever you are doing that brought you to where you are, keep doing it. Wisdom. If it is faithfulness that brought you to where you are, keep being faithful. Your faithfulness may be little, but keep being faithful. Whatever it is that brought you to where you are, keep doing it. Whatever it is that brought you the lifting you are enjoying now, keep doing it. Whatever commitment that you committed yourself to, that opened the door, keep doing it. The day you begin to reduce, you are turning the hand of the clock back. Wisdom. Simple wisdom. Simple wisdom. Whatever brought you to where you are, to what you are enjoying, to the progress you are experiencing, keep doing it. Wisdom. I like the wisdom of Warren Buffett. He said, when others are afraid, I am investing. When they wake up, I begin to withdraw profit. Now hear me. When others are slacking, get more committed. When they wake up, you begin to experience harvest. Now I remember those days when we were in school. Some students only like to read one month to the exam. Am I correct? There are others that start reading that week that a school resume. So when there is a rush to the class to start reading, they start getting themselves aligned with how they will pass the exam. They are two different sets of people. They are rushing to the class one month to the exam. These other ones, they are consolidating on passing the exam. We can never be the same. And we can never score the same. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? One is a fire brigade approach. While this other one is consolidated. That is how we are in the house of God. There are people that only get serious when they need a blessing. When they need deliverance from witchcraft. When they cannot sleep well in the night. In fact, the prayer they have not prayed before, they will begin to pray it. Remember that young man that we, we met the other day? That uh, he doesn't have chance again to come to church. But when he, he needed God desperately for the job, he was in church. Now he has lost the job, he's now in church. May your head be correct. Amen. I say may your head be correct. Amen. If you are not wise when blessings are showing, when you enter adversity, you will be wise. Adversity has a way of teaching people sense. There are people that are not reasonable when blessing is in their hand. They become more reasonable and wise when they are in scarcity, when they are in adversity. May you not be in that class. No wonder God said, go to the ant and learn. Go to the ant and do what? Go to the ant and learn. Why would God say, go to the ant and learn? During dry season, they are gathering. When rainy season comes, you don't see them out anyhow. Go and learn. Learn. You hear me? Commitment is not a gift. Commitment is wisdom. Commitment is not a gift. Oh, this pastor is gifted. Before five o'clock, he's already in church. It's a lie. Commitment is not a gift. Commitment is the choice of the wise. 
commitment is not a gift. It's the choice of the wise. If you think commitment is a gift, go and fast and pray for God to give you that gift. You may never get it. You may never do what? Scriptures say, he that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the cloud shall not do what? Reap. He that observed the wind shall not sow. But scriptures say, in the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, we told not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether it's that of the day or whether of the night, or God will make both alike to be good. In the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, we told not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly, light is sweet. And a pleasant thing for the eye to behold the sun. Walking in light is walking in wisdom. Walking in light is walking in wisdom. If you are coming to church casually, you are not a wise man. If you are coming to church casually, you are not a wise man. Until you begin to take your service serious, God will not take you serious. Jesus asked a parable. What did you go out to see? Some people came to church to see, to observe, to confirm their gossip or what they told them. Hear me, you are not in church. Even if they counted the attendance to be 700 plus, angels have already discounted you. You are already a discount. Why? Because you are not in church because you came to seek God. You came to confirm your gossip. You came to look for the person that quarreled you. Who did you go out to see? What did you go out to watch? Are you in church because your heart was yearning for God? Are you in church because your heart is longing for the power of God? It's better you define it. Because defining it is what defines your advancement. God cannot move a wood that is not ready to be moved. That is why we must make up our mind to experience the kind of change we desire. Serving God pays. Joshua said, Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. He said, As for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. It's your choice. Whatever you are here for is your choice. Thank God I'm not the rewarder. I may be partial. Thank God I am not the rewarder. I may be partial. Thank God there is an eye that is seeing everybody. You say, I the Lord search at the heart. And I examine the ray to reward every man according to his deeds. Not according to how pastor see. Pastor may see and see wrongly. Pastor may judge and judge wrongly. The king may judge and judge partially. But there is a God that sees every heart. And he's the one that rewards well. Serving God pays. Hear me? We are not committed because people are praising us. We are not committed because people are saying, Pastor, you are doing well. In fact, since you came to Lafayette, everything changed. It's a lie. The same mouth that is saying, since you came to laugh, everything changed. They will gossip you one day. Yes, Me, I know that one. Yes, you are not committed because people are praising you. You are committed because there is one marking your register. I hope you know you have register. Oh, you don't know? Everybody here has register, oh, including choir. Your register is one one, it's not group. One, 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 one. As you are seated now, you have one, one register. Let's read it so that you see it. Oh, you think that you don't have register? It's angels that is keeping your register. It's not pastor. Malachi chapter 3. Studio put it on so that everybody can see it. And see where his register is. Verse 16.
Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard, and had it. A book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that, that taught upon his name. Verse 17 now. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my joy, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that served him. Are you seeing it not? Are you seeing it now? Now look at verse 18. Then shall he return and descend between the righteous and the wicked, between him that served God and him that served him not. So your register is marking for you. No wonder in Revelation he said, he that is righteous, let him continually be righteous. He that is wicked, let him continually be wicked. Jesus said, <laughs> to the faithful, I will show myself what? Faithful. So whatever you are doing, it's only a product of either you are wise or you are foolish. But God is counseling you this morning, or this, this night, serving God with wisdom pays the most. God does not only pay us with financial reward, he pays us with blessings, divine health. He pays us with protection, preservation. He pays us with longevity. Serving God pays the most. Serving God pays the most. So you must make up your mind to serve God well. Serve him well. If you want him to bless you well. Go the extra mile. Don't do because someone else is doing. Because the day the person stops doing, you may be demoralized. Your morale may go down. The day somebody misbehaves, you may just change your mind. I was looking up to this person, but since he has, made me, he has messed up, I have changed my mind. For where? No, his road is different from my road. Serving God pays the most. Serving God pays the most. Please, get committed by yourself and for yourself. Get committed for yourself and by yourself. That is a proof that you are wiser. And you know in this kingdom, the more wiser you are, the more flourishing your life become. The more wiser you are. There are two things that await every man. You are either growing in wisdom or you are growing in foolishness. Two things that await every man. Two things that await every man on a daily basis. It is either you are growing in wisdom or you are increasing in foolishness. May you not increase in foolishness. See, foolishness reduces blessing. It increases shame. It terminates growth. It withdraws the hand of God. Much more the hand of your helpers. But wisdom. <laughs> wisdom increases profit. Wisdom increases profit. Wisdom increases profit. It pays to serve God. It pays to serve God with wisdom. Rise up to your feet. We are going to ask God Solomon, God asked Solomon, ask what you want me to give to you. And God was surprised when he said, give me wisdom. And God said, ah, is you only wisdom? He said, I will not only give you wisdom, I will give you every other blessings that goes with wisdom. We are going to pray God now. Lord, give me wisdom for profitable stewardship in the name of Jesus Christ. Every, whatever is making me act foolishly in your house, deliver me. Lift up your voice and talk to God. Lord, increase me in your wisdom. The wisdom that makes for profitable stewardship. La pore no jacose and derata. 
il est des l'eau jamande rupleklik les douze à son hébré lord give me wisdom the wisdom that guarantees profitable stewardship the wisdom that guarantees profitable stewardship lord give me wisdom the wisdom which the holy ghost teaches lord give me wisdom the wisdom that guarantees profitable stewardship lord give me wisdom the wisdom that guarantees profitable stewardship lord give me wisdom wisdom for profitable stewardship wisdom for profitable service in the name of jesus christ lord give me wisdom wisdom for profitable stewardship in the name of jesus christ wisdom that will guarantee more commitment tireless commitment tireless engagement in kingdom advancement in the name of jesus christ lord release upon me wisdom from on high the wisdom of the spirit the wisdom which the holy ghost teaches in the name of jesus christ that will make me get more committed in profitable service in profitable stewardship in the mighty name of jesus christ grant me wisdom give me wisdom for profitable stewardship in the mighty name of jesus spirit of god i ask of you release upon me wisdom for profitable stewardship in the name of jesus christ wisdom that will guarantee advancement in my work with god wisdom that will guarantee advancement in my work with god in the name of jesus christ wisdom that will guarantee advancement in my work with god wisdom that will guarantee advancement in my commitment in the name of jesus christ i ask for the wisdom of god that will guarantee profitable stewardship profitable stewardship in the name of jesus spirit of god release upon me your marvelous head the wisdom of god that guarantees profitable stewardship in every area of my life in the name of jesus christ lord deliver me from every form of foolishness in the name of jesus christ deliver me from every form of foolishness from every form of unprofitable labor in the name of jesus christ spirit of god i ask for your help wisdom that will guarantee profitable stewardship in the name of jesus wisdom that guarantees profitable stewardship in the mighty name of jesus wisdom that guarantees profitable stewardship thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray scripture say as he gave them the communion their eyes were open we are going to pray lord as i partake of this communion let there be a release of divine understanding david said the righteousness of thy testimony is everlasting he said give me understanding and i shall live lord as i partake of this communion give me understanding better understanding for profitable living better understanding in the name of jesus christ give me understanding for profitable living in the name of jesus give me understanding for profitable living for profitable living in the name of jesus give me understanding for profitable living in the name of jesus Give me understanding, Lord, that will make my life more better. That will make my life more better. That will make my life more profitable. That will make my life more reasonable. I call for your help in the name of Jesus. I call for your help in the name of Jesus. Give me understanding and I shall live. In the name of Jesus, give me understanding and I shall live. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. As we partake of this communion, let there be an impartation of divine understanding. If you are saying amen, say better amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray.